Welcome back. This is the video training series for the eManage VMS cloud-based software by VendingZoo. Now in this video I will be going through how to manage your product list inside of your Toucan software. So at this point you should be getting fairly familiar with the navigation panel here on the left, as well as the types of screens that are used in Toucan. Now remember, there are only two types of screens or windows that you need to be familiar with. The first type is the list screen. Now all of the list screens are opened up using the navigation panel. The list screens allow you to search, format, and export your data from the cloud. They do not allow you to add or change data. For that, you want to use the second type of screen, which is the edit screen. Now edit screens are usually opened up from a list screen by using the edit button on a particular item like a location, machine, or product that is in the list. So master those two types of screens and you are a cloud master. Now in this video we are going to be using our product list to go over managing your products in your software. So I'm going to open up my product section and click on my product list to open up that list screen. Now it doesn't matter if you have logged into your software 20 times or if this is the very first time you're logging into your software, you will have products in your product list because we pre-populate this list for you with some of the more popular products to give you a jump start. Now we know that eventually you are going to want to make changes to this list and add new things or delete some of these or change the names. So let's walk through the process of how you do that. Now, as you look in your list, there is one product here that you cannot change, and that is this empty product. This is a system product, and so you cannot make changes to this one or delete it. All of the others are free to do with as you will. All right, when we're on a search list, we know that we've got a button bar up here at the top, and typically there is an add button of some kind that lets us add new things to our list. So we're going to go ahead and click on my add product button and that opens up my edit screen so the only thing I need to enter here is a product name so I just give it a name and then I can go ahead and save it so we'll click save and now we've just added a new product to our list um, so it's very easy to add products and build this list out rather quickly then we can go ahead and edit by using our edit button here in our search list and we can actually pick a different category for this product if we want to say it's food make our change and now our change shows up here in our search list okay let's go through that again and we'll go through each one of the items on a product so we know what those are used for so I'm gonna add a new product so I can click on my add product button like I did or as you know you can also use this plus or add button right there as well go ahead and click on our add product now on our add product screen this is a blank edit screen we have a button here called show working locations and it's grayed out if I try to click on it nothing happens we'll actually go through what this uh, show working locations button is for but for now just know that whenever you're adding a new product there is no way that that product can be part of a working location since you're just adding it that's why the button is grayed out alright we have a field for the name so we can type in what the product name is we have a calories per serving field so we can document what the, what the serving calories are now we also have an active indicator Now this active indicator works just like the active indicator for machines um, and for locations in a way it is sort of like deleting a product without actually deleting it from your cloud in other words there are places inside of the software like when you locate a machine and you place products in that machine you use drop-down lists to pick the products the products that show up in that drop-down list are the products that we're building here in our product list but we may want to uh, control those products that show up in those drop-down lists and we do that with this active indicator the drop-down lists for example when you're putting product in a machine only show active products so if there's a product that we no longer want to show up in any of our lists we can come in here and inactivate it just by checking that box 
and it remains in our product list but it won't show up in the other product drop down areas of the software. A reason we might, we might want to do that is if we have a product um, and we have used that product in previous machines so we know there's history with that product and that product was vended from those machines and there's revenue attached to it. We don't want to use it anymore. Uh, maybe there was a recall or for some reason we decided that it, it doesn't work well so we're not going to use it but we don't want to delete it completely because we do have revenue attached to it. So in that case we could come in here and make it inactive. If it's a product that we've never used in any machine anywhere then we're probably fine just to go ahead and delete it and uh, and once it's deleted it is gone. There is no edit undo. So for that reason we do have the active indicator sort of a way of deleting it without actually deleting it. In addition to what you have up here we've got some drop downs so let's go through what each of these are. You have tax types so if you live in a state where sales tax is required for vending machines then you can define what the tax types are for a particular product. So for example if carbonated beverages are taxed then you can define that a particular product is a carbonated beverage or it's a food or a snack. These tax types um, for your state can be found on your state's website for the tax authority for your state. If you're not sure what these are you don't need to include them now. You can always come back into these products and edit them later. So for adding products it's not required. But if you do know what those are as you're adding the products you can go ahead and pick those. Also there's a category drop-down. Now the category drop-down is just something that you can use to organize and categorize the products the way you would like to. So there are some categories that are already um, provided for you in the list that you can pick from but you can also create your own. Likewise storage type. Now the storage type is incorporated into the inventory module of Toucan. Um, and there's a separate video that will be done that will explain the inventory module. But for this purpose, for, uh, for this video purpose, you can just think of a storage type as how you want to store your products in your storage area. So if you want to keep track of them at, in bags, so if you've got um, pirate booty or um, pita chips that are in bags, you can make a storage type of bags and, and uh, assign it to those products or if the products are stored as bars or bottles whatever you would like um, to kind of categorize or, or um, define what the storage type of that product is in your storage area of your inventory. Now, I recommend that you always pick something or create something that represents a single item like a bag or a bar and try to avoid things like pounds or ounces or cases for your storage types. All right. So let's go ahead and um, give Bob's Booty a category. Let's say that we want to categorize it as organic. And that's not in our list, so we want to create a new category. We can modify and control what shows up in our drop down list by using the edit button that's right next to it. So I want to go into categories, edit, and that's going to open up a custom product category window for me. So here's where I can add and manage my own categories. So add category and we'll make it organic. Now by default it's going to be active. This is another way that I can control what shows up in my um, category drop down is only my active products will show up in my list. Likewise as I build a list of longer categories they'll each have a delete button next to them so I can delete a category out of my list if I if I no longer want to use it or just make it inactive. Um, bear in mind I cannot inactivate or delete a category if it's being used in a product for a product or in a machine template. So if I want to delete one out first I'll need to go into the products that are using that category and change it to something else and then I'll be able to come in and delete out that category. Let's go ahead and save that and now we have organic in our category drop-down. Alright let's go ahead and add a new storage type to 
our list. Maybe we want to be a little bit more granular and we want to store things as a 6 ounce bag or a 12 ounce bag and Bob's booty comes in a 6 ounce bag. So we will add 6 ounce bag and while we're at it let's add a 12 ounce bag. And we'll try to make those look consistent. Leave them both active and save. Okay, now we can use six ounce bag for Bob's booty. Very good. Let's go ahead and save this now. So we'll save it and now Bob's booty shows up in our product list. And you'll notice our category and our storage type did not show up. But when we modified Brenda's bagels and made it a food category, that category showed up. So it's a very good question as to why our Bob's Booty category and storage types didn't show up. They are still there. If we go back into our edit, those categories are still there. They do still show up in our drop-down list. And um, they, they're still in our category list as well. And let's go ahead and add a new category. So everything seems to work here, but it's just not showing up back here on our list window. The reason that is, is the list windows are trying to be as efficient as possible. In other words, each one of the drop-down lists in the list window gets populated when that list window first opens up. So when the list window opens up, what it does is it goes out to the cloud and it gets these lists and populates itself and it does that one time when it opens and it's doing that to be efficient so that if you are on a slow internet connection it does not want to waste your time every time you're clicking on something to run back out to the cloud to look and see if there's new things added to these drop-down lists the edit windows do do that because typically when you're on an edit window you are making changes and so the edit windows do do that and that's why our new stuff shows up here and shows up in our custom windows immediately when we add it but our search windows don't have those new things yet and typically that's okay because usually when we create these lists we're doing it in the beginning and once we get the list created it doesn't change very much after that now if we really want our search window to show this stuff up right now we can tell it to go ahead and re-retrieve those items from the cloud and we do that by doing a refresh. So I'll just do a refresh. Now our search windows will grab that information from the cloud so all of our new stuff will now show up when we go into our product list and there it is. Bob's Booty Organic and the 6 ounce bag. So um, that only happens um, when you add or change things to your drop-down lists, your search windows will not show those new things until it gets refreshed. But that is still being saved into your cloud and you're not losing any data. Alright, so at this point um, you should be pretty comfortable with knowing how to search your product and use the search windows, um, export data from your search lists, and be able to add new products to your lists as well as edit those products and delete them. So for example, if we want to delete Brenda's Bagels, we simply use our delete button right here. And that'll go ahead and let us delete it. Now if this product was being used somewhere else, we wouldn't be able to delete it until we went into those working locations and changed the product out so that when we delete something, the software checks to make sure that it's not being used or being actively um, vended from a machine. We should be able to delete Bob's booty as well. And there's a second way we can delete items. If we go into the edit window, we have a delete button as well there. So we can go ahead and delete Bob's booty. Okay, so that's how you can control and manage your product list. Now. The last thing we want to talk about is that working locations button. So the reason that you have that button is to give you a quick way of finding where you have a product located. So for example, if we want to look at our cliff bar, our peanut butter cliff bars, 
come into our edit window and we just say show working locations. What Toucan does is it will go through all of our working locations and find all of the places and coils where we are using Cliff Bar Peanut. So it gives us that coil and if we have a card reader in our machine it can also give us the level of product in that coil for that particular time. So the uh, the show working location window is really nice for example if uh, you just really need to know where a product is located and some examples of where that might come in handy is if for example um, you know that you've got some product in your storage area that is going to be expiring and you want to find all of the places in your machines where that product is being used use that show working locations um, a more rare instance could be if a product is recalled and you need to be able to find where that product is in your machines easily. Again, that show working location list. Um, another way that you might want to use this window is if you have a product and it is just vending like crazy from one location. It's just being drained from that machine and you can't go out and buy new product yet, um, but you want to double up that product in that machine where it's being vended so well so you could come into your um, working location list for a particular product and find all of the places where that product is located and then by using the level you could you could uh, find it where a machine may be full of it and it's not moving very fast from that location so you could go use the product from that one machine and move it into the machine where it's being vended so there's some ideas behind why you may want to use that working location list. Now one of the things about that working location window, I'm not sure if you noticed, but the list behind it, the search list, doesn't go dark when you open up your working location list. This means that you can actually open up multiple versions of the working list. So we can leave our Cliff Bar Peanut up there and we can go find green apple slices and open that one up. Then we could even go to a working location screen and even though this um, background does go dark so we can't make changes on the on the darker background we can still see that indeed at the uh, relaxation house our Cliff Peanut Butter is in C10 and C2 and there it is in C2 and there it is in C10. So these windows do allow you to open them up multiple times and you can move them around as you need to. All right, so just like with all the other videos, if you subscribe to the video channel as new features and functionality come out and we document those features through the training series, you'll automatically be notified when those things come out. So there's some benefit to subscribing to the channel so that you'll get those notifications um, from YouTube. Now when you are on the YouTube training series or on the, the Vending Zoo channel, the way in which you subscribe is when you're on this screen that shows you the playlists, you can scroll to the top and the subscribe button usually shows up in a, as a red button. Just click on that and then that allows you to subscribe so that you'll get those notifications when new features and functionality are introduced. Thank you.